So I guess we shall uh, start. Uh, so good morning uh, to everyone. First of all, uh, let me wish you all a very happy new year. So uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Emmanuel Bacri. I'm the general chair of the AI for Health School and the scientific director of the Health Data Hub, which is one of the main organizer uh, of this uh, school. It's uh, an honor for me to start this new year with uh, you and to welcome you uh, at our first AI for Health School. So AI for Health, why? Well, I guess that if you are with us today, you're already convinced that the potential of AI in health is really profound. AI to increase our ability to better understand pathologies or patient needs uh, for diagnostic ads, for precision or personalized medicine, uh, for pharmacovigilance, clinical trials. And I, I, could, I could cite many, many more. We could go forever listing all the potential applications of AI for health. And of course, I won't right now. But let me just point out what I think is one of the most important drivers of AI for health, interdisciplinarity bringing together healthcare professionals and researchers from different disciplines so that they can exchange ideas, work together. This is how AI will enable revolutionary applications in healthcare. So we did our best to make this school a meeting place for different disciplines and professions, mathematicians, computer scientists, physicians, and many others from public institutions or private companies. We have around 20 renowned speakers, faculty members, and professionals from private companies covering many disciplines. And today you are over 500 participants uh, with us uh, from all over the world. I think there are more than 25 countries, so it's a real uh, success, we're really happy. Um, and it's now my pleasure to open uh, this uh, AI for Health School. So there will be three days of uh, exciting lectures followed by two days of practical sessions for some of you. Uh, the school has been co-organized by the Health Data Hub and the three arti French artificial intelligence institutions, uh, the one from Paris, the one from Nice, and the one from uh, Grenoble. Uh, they will speak uh, a little bit uh, uh, right uh, after me. But first of all, I would like to thank a few people and of course start by uh, thanking all the speakers who have made themselves available and will present really exciting lectures. The plenary speakers, Sofia Ananayadou, sorry, Michael Bronstein, Dorin Kobanichu, Barbara Engelhardt, Pierre Skeen, Susan Murphy, and Adrian Weller. But also, of course, all the practical session leaders. There are, I'm sorry, there are too many to name them all. I hope they will forgive me. So this is a virtual format. Of course, it was not what we had expected from the onset. And you can imagine it was really complex to organize. I hope everybody's hearing me right now. So I would like to thank very deeply uh, the Health Data Hub team who worked really hard to make this event uh, happen. First of all, Luisa, who supervised the whole thing in close collaboration with Victor. But I would like also to thank Mathieu, Agathe, Samuel, Nicolas, Emma, Julien, Sophie, Clarisse, Valérie, Thomas, Jonathan, and Stéphanie. As you see, it's a long list because it was not that easy to make. So thank you to all of you. I would also like to thank all the members of the scientific committee that have been of tremendous help in setting up the academic agenda, reviewing all the applications, and uh, as you will see, moderating the lectures. And I would like to thank our uh, partners for their trust and implication. The Diamond Partners, Elsevier, Huawei, Johnson & Roche, the Gold Partners, MSD, Pfizer, Pierre Fabre, and Sanofi, and the silver partners, Amgen, EIT Health, Quinton, and Medtronic. Last but not least, uh, let me mention that I'm very pleased to confirm today the idea of a second edition of the same school, virtual again, and the date will be uh, confirmed uh, later. So now it's time for me to hand over to our valued three uh, AI institutions, co-organizers, so that they can give you a quick overview of their institution and their research work. Right after that, 
And just before the first official lecture of the school, I will tell you about uh, the Hell Data Hub and give you some practical information about the school. Uh, it's to you, Nicola, now. Please share the screen. Okay, thank and you very sorry much, again. Uh, Emmanuel. That's fine, that's fine. Um, so I hope that you can see my slides yes, now. Yes, everybody sees it. Yes, it's yes, fine. Good. Okay, so uh, so this is the Troisia uh, Côte d'Azur. I am the Nicolaiage Scientific Director, and uh, the institute is headed by Charles Bourg. And we are in a very nice uh, location in uh, Nice and Sofia Antipolis, uh, between uh, the sea, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Alps, uh, which are full of snow right now. And also, uh, we have a lot of uh, academic partners there, the partners of Université Côte d'Azur, that you can see here on, on the slide. So our research program is uh, the development of real-world AI with applications to health, and this includes medicine and biology, and also smart uh, territories. And uh, we have uh, four main research axes. Uh, first, is core elements of AI. Second one is AI for integrative computational medicine. Third one is AI for computational biology and also bio AI. And number four is AI for smart and secure uh, territories. And to develop uh, this uh, research uh, program, we have a number of shareholders with their teams. In fact, currently we have 39 of them, but we plan to have 50 uh, within the next two years. And they do the research, they do also the teaching for the education, and they do the innovations through uh, collaborations with companies. And in fact, there are many interactions uh, between uh, the shareholder teams and also between the axis, and also with the other um, institute, Troisia. Uh, the first axis is the development of core elements of AI. Uh, so we develop models and algorithms for real-world problems along uh, four main topics, statistical, machine, and deep learning, knowledge representation and reasoning, constraint-aware AI, and also interpretable, explainable, and trustable AI. So currently we have 13 uh, shareholders uh, whose names are uh, presented in blue here. We have also uh, additional uh, shareholders uh, in green coming from other axes who contribute to this axis and a number of companies. So the second axis is the one dedicated to AI for integrative computational medicine. And here we try to develop uh, AI methods to build the e-patient, to build e-medicine solutions based on uh, statistical, geometrical, biophysical, and semantic knowledge of the anatomy, the physiology, the metabolism of the patient. And we have three main topics. Uh, the first one is biophysics-based AI, where we build a physical model of the patient that we call a digital twin. And uh, we learn uh, biophysical parameters to get a more quantitative diagnosis. We use uh, the digital twin to predict evolution of uh, pathologies or effect of therapies. And also uh, we do data augmentation from biophysical simulation. A second topic is data-driven AI. And here we try to exploit the statistical relationships between the patient conditions and the patient measurements. So we try to combine, for instance, imaging and omics biomarkers along with uh, clinical information, lifestyle, behavior information to do a better patient selection. We also uh, try to exploit video analytics and sensors uh, for better patient monitoring. And the third topic, medical data management, as you uh, we are dealing with very uh, sensitive and regulated uh, medical uh, data. And so we have a close collaboration with uh, Health Data Hub. 
uh, and other partners, and also, uh, for instance, with uh, King's College on this topic. What is interesting is that we have identified a number of core AI issues, which are related to axis number one, uh, which are listed here. And you can see uh, seven uh, primary chair holders names in blue, along with uh, secondary shareholders in green and more than 18 uh, companies are collaborating here. Uh, the main targets are in cancer, cardiovascular and brain diseases, and also rehabilitation of uh, disabled patients. We see here an illustration, for instance, of uh, our oncology uh, projects on the process on the breast, the liver, on the lungs, where we try to combine medical images with information uh, for the diagnosis and uh, the, the prediction of the therapy. In the middle, here we see an example of the combination in cardiology of a biophysical model of the heart with deep learning uh, to uh, do a better uh, and uh, therapy planning. And on the right, examples of uh, the uh, research on uh, brain diseases where we combine uh, structural and functional information along, for instance, with motion uh, capture uh, to better uh, monitor patients with neuropsychiatric uh, diseases. Let me briefly mention what we do in axis number three, which is AI for computational biology and bio-inspired AI. Here the focus is really to use AI for the analysis of advanced biological data with two objectives, computational uh, to reveal complex uh, biological processes. This is uh, AI for computational biology. And number two, to inspire innovative computational processes, and this is bio-inspired AI. I, I don't detail uh, these topics, but again, a number of core AI issues related to axis number one are present here and addressed in this axis. So you can see uh, the names of the seven uh, chairholders. Uh, here, along uh, with secondary shareholders, and again, more than 10 uh, companies are involved here. Uh, let me just illustrate, for instance, we work on uh, 3D conformation of proteins, as was just mentioned by the previous uh, speaker. Uh, we work also on uh, cellular biological networks using data from human cell atlas, and from single cell genotype analysis, we have access to cutting edge uh, fluorescence and multispectral uh, microscopic images. And uh, we do studies on the neuronal uh, uh, networks, for instance, on the rat, on the computer interfaces, and the development of a, neuron, a new neuronal hardware architectures. So I will skip the description of axis number four. You will find it in the appendix of the slides. Uh, we have more than 62 companies uh, contributing to this uh, institute. You can see some of the logos here. And uh, to conclude, I would like to advertise uh, these two very recent books on healthcare and artificial intelligence. One is in English, the other one in French. You get more information on our website, which is still under construction, especially for the education uh, program. And so for a number of PhD and postdoc positions that will be made available in the coming weeks. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Nicolas, and sorry again. So now I'm going to hand over uh, to uh, Alexandre Morogodry, so you can turn your uh, camera on, please, Alexandre. Hello, Alexandre. So, Alexandre is the health director of the artificial intelligence Troisia from Grenoble, which is called MIE. Uh, so, Alexandre, it's your turn, please. Alexandre? Yeah. Yes. 
Thank you very much, uh, Donc Emmanuel, for giving me the opportunity to present uh, MIA. Uh, donc, very quickly, with a more precise focus on, uh, on uh, what is being done uh, in the health field. Donc, uh, MIA is a multidisciplinary institute uh, in uh, artificial uh, intelligence. It's therefore one of the four interdisciplinary artificial intelligence uh, institute that has been labeled by the French government. It is uh, located in uh, Grenoble. Uh, and more precisely in the geographical area of the University of Grenoble Alps. This project is uh, coordinated by uh, Professor Eric Gossier, uh, who is uh, the former director of the Grenoble Informatics Laboratory. Within the framework of this uh, coordination, uh, Professor Eric Gossier is supported by a scientific committee with two representatives of the health field, Donc Emmanuel Barbier, who is member of the Grenoble Institute Neurosciences, and uh, me. Donc, I'm currently uh, specialized in uh, medical uh, informatics and also uh, the new director of the Team C laboratory, a laboratory uh, that is uh, concerned by translational innovation in medicine and complexity. The general objectives of uh, MIAI are in line with those desired by the French government uh, and therefore have similarity with those presented uh, above. That is to say, to organize a world-class interdisciplinary research network, to train students and professionals in leading-edge AI research, to propose AI solutions with large companies, small and medium-sized enterprises and startups, to communicate and interact with the public on AI, including its application and its impact on society. Relative, relatively to the research themes and the different axes that are developed inside this project, the choice was made to organize the, this project in two parts. Uh, the first one, uh, the first component is focused on a future AI system. It organized in three parts, uh, which are respectively machine learning and reasoning, with, uh, donc, uh, which involved machine learning models, statistics on organizations, fair and evolvable AI. The second part is focused on hardware and embedded architecture for AI. And uh, it involves also uh, neuroprocessing uh, units and research on distributed intelligence. And at least uh, three main scientific fields are developed in the perception and interaction uh, part. That is to say, uh, research on robotics, natural language, and speech processing, and also computer vision. The second component is dedicated to the exploration of the more applicative field of AI, and in particular in the dimension of uh, AI and society, environment and energy, and also industry 4.0. And uh, naturally, we have a dedicated program research to AI applications in the, in the health field. Three program research are currently uh, developed uh, in this field. The first two projects relate to real-life 4P medicine, that is to say real-life personalized, predictive, participatory, and preventive medicine. The deep care program is rooted in the will to mark the synergy between artificial intelligence and care, and it will focus on the ability to characterize the state of health in real life by developing new tools that would enable a term to empower everyone to act on their own health. This research program is uh, leaded by uh, Professor Philippe Sanquin. My Way to Health is coordinated by Professor Jean-Louis Pépin and also Mr. Mignot from Stanford University. In this project, uh, the main aim is to use artificial intelligence to characterize and predict health tra trajectories and also to anticipate the effectiveness on pharmacological on behavioral interventions. Now, the sort of project is uh, focused on uh, artificial intelligence for arthropod biomedical investigations. This program is uh, led by uh, Professor uh, Julien Tovenon and uh, Dr. Thomas Berger. Here, the main aim is to develop a new machine learning methods uh, to better predict and diagnose health conditions and identify new biomarkers. To finish, the last research program is dedicated to computer assisted medical intelligence that is coordinated by Dr. Jocelyn Trocas and Sandrine Voros. Here, what we want to do is to develop a new medical device, new generation of computer and robotic assistants 
that will be that will be based on advances in AI in order to model the clinical rate of gesture to be able to recognize it in real time and to provide the contextualized help to the practitioner. From an, from an educational point of view, we propose, according to us, an attractive environment in Grenoble. Grenoble has a world-renowned multidisciplinary academic uh, expertise uh, with uh, more than 1,500 1, uh, faculty, PhD students, and postdoctoral researchers uh, who are working on EI and related fields. We are recognized at the international level through an honorable ranking at the Shanghai Academic Ranking. Uh, 700 students are currently trained in EI in Grenoble, and we develop a specific label in order to characterize professional qualification in EI. We develop also a dedicated training course in EI. For instance, you can see here the program for 20, uh, 2021 with uh, dedicated courses on AI analytics, deep learning, and so on. Long training courses uh, are taught directly within uh, engineering schools or within a master. Uh, we also develop uh, MEI meetings and uh, uh, webinar, for instance, uh, the first Friday of each month. So, uh, in short, uh, a lot of initiatives, many training courses, activities offered within our university to promote the field of AI. Naturally, such an environment um, is uh, conducive to future academic opportunities, uh, whether there are proposals for master's internship or proposal for science thesis or post-doctorate. We must not also uh, forget uh, the privileged location of the site, in particular near the French Alps. I must also mention the close connection of MIAI with a company of all sizes, companies that are involved in the field of AI. On this slide, a non-exhaustive representation of collaboration with company. The blue frame represents a collaboration with company on health topics. We would like also uh, to uh, have a specific thank you for some of the sponsors of this winter school. These sponsors are identified by the red frames. To complete this uh, overview of MIAI, do not hesitate to consult uh, the website uh, directly or to get, in to, to get in touch directly with the shareholders uh, in order to get a more precise idea of what uh, MIAI is. Finally, I would like to warmly thank all the people with whom I worked uh, and who made this event possible, whether it is the Health Data Hub team, my colleagues from other Interdisciplinary Artificial Intelligence Institute, as well as my colleague Daniel Pagonis, Jean-Marie Jean-Nuel, Philippe Cinquin, and naturally uh, Professor Pascal Stassini, who is the current president of the French Association of uh, Medical Informatics, which is also naturally concerned by uh, the advance in AI and the improvement of the care of your patients. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Alexandre, and sorry again for uh, this morning. Uh, so now I will uh, hand over uh, to uh, Stéphanie Alassonière, who presented to you without the slides, and so now we're going to have the presentation with the slides. And right after uh, your talk, Stéphanie, I will be presenting the Health Data Hub and, and give you some practical information about the, the school. <laughs> Stéphanie, right. the floor is all yours. Thank you, Emmanuel. Well, thank you for this second chance. I hope this time you will Okay, you will be able to follow the slides. Uh, so um, I will present Prairie. So this is an, the third uh, institute in France uh, among the four, and the third one who is, which is devoted to uh, health in, uh, as a particular uh, application field. So the institute is composed uh, of shareholders from five academic uh, partners, which are listed here and in particular University of Paris, uh, which is also a partner of this winter school. And uh, we are supported by uh, industrial partners, who are, which are listed here. And again, among them, Janssen and Pfizer, which are also supported uh, the winter school. So uh, the Institute is located in Paris, as you 
may uh, guess, and it takes advantage of the geographical ecosystem. And in particular, we are we have close collaboration with the Assistance Publique Hôpitaux de Paris, which is gathering together almost all hospitals in the Paris area. So uh, the ambition of the Prairie Institute is really to be recognized uh, as an international leader in AI research and education with real socio-economic impacts. To be able to reach this goal, uh, we uh, we want to create a virtuous circle based on collaboration between individuals that are top leaders in their uh, AI researchers field and interaction between academics and its industrial partners with, of course, international co collaboration as well. So the institute is uh, leaded by the shareholders, both juniors and seniors, and they cover the full spectrum of AI from core AI to the application fields, which are not only health, but also transport and environment. So uh, among the 36 shareholders, and so which, which are senior ones and the nine springboards, the junior ones, you have uh, the, the repetition here for core research integration, which covers computer vision, data science, NLP, and so on, and the application. And uh, devoted to health, we have four groups. The first one is leading medical imaging researchers. The challenges that they are uh, trying to uh, address are the following. So feature extraction first, radiomic, and in particular, multimodal journal analysis. In this group, you will probably be able to meet with Ninon Burgos and Stanley Jolleman, who are um, labeled with this uh, blue frame for the uh, practical session on Thursday and Friday. Concerning biolog biological imaging, uh, the team is trying to really model the real neural network on small insects, for example, and to do statistical learning with fewer annotations and you may be able to meet with Thomas Walter uh, further this week. The third group uh, is composed of four people who are uh, trying to set new decision support systems to optimize the patient pathway, to evaluate responses to treatment in different uh, pathologies, especially rare diseases or chronic diseases, and then assembling cohort for clinical trials. And the last one is the genomic group, and their challenge is led by the large-scale analysis of very heterogeneous data. Uh, so the, 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 uh, the COVID-19 crisis made also other Prairie Fellow to join their forces and adapt or propose new contribution to analyze or understand the uh, pandemic. And you have some, some examples here that are listed which really makes uh, prairie uh, the, the which really makes the health uh, application a, a fundamental application in the prairie institutes concerning education education is the second uh, the second priority of prairie and the goal is really to increase the number of people that will receive ai training not becoming for everybody a, a data scientist that is able to deal in himself or herself with the data, but trying to really understand and, and uh, interact with people that are data scientists also. So we, we are trying to uh, propose um, programs that are both for um, professionals, lifelong training, or for initial training. And of course, applications are, well, are welcome for the, uh, the different programs that we have developed. Some of them are master twos, where you have entrepreneurship de uh, dealing with um, medical, uh, me medical environment. You have more data science tracks that are given here, either dedicated to health or not. And you have also some NDPHD programs on AI and executive master that you can find on the web page of Prairie. So to conclude, uh, Prairie is trying really to bring together the strengths of both their researcher, its researcher and its academic industrial partner 
within this tremendous economic eco ecosystem that we have in the Paris area. Uh, we will, would like to uh, increase uh, our forces by recruiting new chairs, increasing the, the women participation, which is still something that is lacking everywhere in the AI research and involve our, the startup because the ecosystem in Paris of startups is really uh, um, Im impressive. Right, thank you for, uh, for that. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Thank you to all of you to have made you available this afternoon to do the session again. So uh, now I will be uh, sharing my screen to present, to tell you how the hub. So I hope it is working. Okay, great. Uh, so we've been talking about AI a lot, and I guess that everybody is convinced that at the heart of AI uh, for health, there is health data, right? And I must say we are very lucky in France because we have a lot of great health uh, databases. However, even though many important research projects are already operating on some of them, these databases are, I think, still largely underexploited. And I think this is something that can be said about health databases of most countries in the world. This is not a specificity of France. I would say that they are underexploited mainly because of three reasons, uh, roughly speaking. Basically because they are scattered all over the place, uh, in France, for instance. Most of them are not interoperable. It's very hard to make them, to make the, the databases discussed together. And uh, last but not least, the governance can, of the data, uh, of the database can be different for every database and can be pretty complex. And it can be a nightmare for researcher to access some databases. And I, I guess, uh, I guess uh, this is uh, something that a lot of you have uh, experienced. Um, at the Health Data Hub, what we seek uh, to address uh, is to, to address these problems. So practically speaking, the Hub offers uh, a unified governance for operating public interest research using large health databases on a highly secured, modern and highly scalable technological platform, and of course, the access to the data is in full compliance with applicable regulations and citizens' data privacy and confidentiality rights. And last but not least, we are going to publish a catalog that will be enriched through time with various replicated strategic big health databases that will be ready to use on the platform to operate public interest research. So this uh, catalog will, of course, include the so-called uh, historical SNDS for Système National de Données de Santé. This is really a, a, a dual database that many other countries in the world envy us. So strictly speaking, it is not a health database because it doesn't have any clinical data, but it records all the reimbursements of the health cares of all people in France. And since we are very lucky in France because we are reimbursed partially everything, all the health cares. So basically in this database, you get the records of all the health cares for more than 65 million people. And consequently, it is one of the biggest claims databases in the world. Now, the, the good news is that this huge database that covers basically uh, all France will be linkable to most of the other databases of the catalog. And I guess that you know that in the era of big data and AI, uh, chaining heterogeneous databases like images with genomic data, administrative data, biological data, and many more is maybe the most efficient way to enrich them. Uh, so in the catalog, you will find very various types of databases apart from the historical SNDS. Databases, for instance, of all the emergency services in France, registry databases, cohort databases, and many, many more. So today, uh, we have more than 
30 research uh, uh, projects uh, that are already in the pipeline, uh, in the hub. Eight of them are related to COVID and uh, some of them already started and many will start soon. And when the catalog will be published, uh, no doubt that we will expect many, many, many more uh, projects. So very soon, you should be able to apply for accessing some of the databases of the catalog for operating your own research. And the good news is that it is free of charge for all European national public institutions. Okay. Um, and this is, this is, of course, very important. And we work with European partners a lot. This is very important not to just do something uh, in France. It is very important to, to see large. Uh, and actually, we are building very close relationships with similar initiatives in Europe and beyond Europe, of course. And we are very active also in the construction of the future European health data space. We took the French lead of the European Health Data Space Joint Action and, of, uh, and we are leading uh, uh, four or co-leading four uh, work packages in this action. Uh, last thing I wanted to tell you is I recommend you to check regularly our website or uh, ask to receive our newsletters because we regularly organize international events. So, of course, there is this school. This is the first opus. As I told you, there will be an, an, a new, another edition, a second opus that will be had in 2021. Uh, the date has to be confirmed. We have already organized an international data challenge with the French Society of Pathology. It was extremely successful. We had more than uh, several hundred participants. I don't remember exactly how, how many. I think it was 500 participants, yes. We are going to organize a, a new challenge in 2021, so keep posted, look at the site because uh, it's open to all the countries. And we have been also organizing colloquiums, such uh, last uh, December, which is international collo colloquium on the health data, uh, uh, and especially with a lot of uh, European uh, speakers. Um, of course, if you have any question about the hub, uh, uh, you can write to the email address that you see on the screen right now. Uh, you can ask to, to, be, to, to subscribe to the newsletter and you can get a lot of information on, the, on our website uh, that is also uh, on the screen. So we are pretty new. The Health Data Hub started about a year ago. Uh, so I'm sorry, but the website is still in French. It will be translated in English uh, by March. Uh, so for now, uh, I'm sorry for uh, uh, people who are not uh, speaking French, but you can send us email and we will send you information. So this is uh, what I wanted to tell you for the hub. And now I move uh, to some practical information uh, about uh, the uh, health about the, the AI for school uh, health uh, uh, that you are attending right now. So three events you shouldn't uh, miss. The first one is the poster session today at 5 p.m. Central European time. So the way it works, you can browse the posters uh, uh, since this morning. You go on the menu on the top uh, right side of the platform site. When you go there, you can click on the menu and open all the posters to understand which one you are interested in. And then at 5 p.m., you connect in your agenda to the poster session and you will uh, choose which poster you want to go to listen to. And each, um, each author of each poster will do four presentations of 15 minutes during the hour. So one at 5 p.m., one at 5.15, 5.30, 5.45. Okay, and you can join which one you want. Uh, and so you can, you can listen to four different presentations. There is no limitation of the number of people uh, uh, during these sessions. And normally you can speak, so the, the, you are able to, to just speak and not just chat. So this is, this is good for interactivity. So this is the first event I wanted to tell you about. The second important event is the round table uh, with our diamond partners. So, uh, this is El Sevier, Huawei, Janssen, and Roche. And this is uh, tomorrow um, at 4.30 uh, p.m. Central European time. Everything is given Central European time. Okay. 
Uh, and the third uh, uh, event, which is important, is the networking session, which is which will take place on Wednesday. Wednesday, sorry, at five thirty to six thirty. So how it's going to work, we will tell you uh, maybe tomorrow uh, during the conference. But basically, you will be able to date uh, for a short date of ten minutes. Uh, on one-to-one, -one, any uh, of the diamond uh, partner or the gold partners. So that's Elsevier, Huawei, Janssen, Roche, MSD, Pfizer, Pierre Fabre, and Sanofi. Okay, it's not working right now, but you will be able to arrange date uh, very soon. We will tell you when it's when the the feature is is available, and you'll be able to do a ten-minute meeting with any of these uh, uh, partners. A few more information, and then I will leave you uh, to go to the next session. Uh, of course, this you understood, so feel free to ask questions during lectures uh, using the, the chat. You can uh, tweet uh, during the conference using the hashtag ai for health that you see right now uh, appearing on your screen. Uh, if you just don't want to bother going on your agenda when you arrive on the platform, and something is happening, there is a live button on the right, on the top right hand side of the, the window. So you can just click there and you go in the session, which is live. Uh, this is this and uh, all sessions are recorded uh, and will be available for replay normally the day after. So tomorrow's session should be available tomorrow for uh, people uh, who are uh, jet lag, especially, I mean, we are people from uh, the States or Canada, and this is difficult for them in the morning, which I understand. Uh, for those of you who are following practical sessions, please don't forget to download all the materials before going to the session so that uh, the, the, the leaders of the session don't lose time explaining to you what to do. So normally, if you have questions, you can send them beforehand. Okay, don't hesitate. And uh, in any way, you have two uh, emails at the bottom of the screen here uh, where you can send uh, either technical questions or content questions. Okay, so this is it. I will stop the sharing of the screen. Oops, I'm sorry, I thought my camera was uh, on, but it was not, I'm really sorry. Uh, so, at, uh, in eight minutes exactly, we will have uh, the next uh, session by Dorin Komanichu. So, you have to log off now and, uh, and uh, log in uh, again using the right link to attend the session of Dorin. Okay, so thank you very much to everybody and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.